In this video, we're going to look at a cost table again, and we're going to fill it out and discuss what they mean, and then we're going to graph and use it. So I'm not going to spend much time explaining how to calculate it, but more what it means. So let's get started. Here, total fixed cost, total variable cost, average fixed cost, average variable cost, average total cost, and marginal cost, fixed costs. If you want to figure out fixed cost, look at the quantity of zero. When I'm producing nothing, I'm not spending money on variable costs, labor and materials. And so that total cost for producing zero units, $650, is your fixed cost all the time. It's fixed, doesn't go up, so it's always 650 Variable costs, labor and materials costs. Well, variable costs plus fixed cost equals total. So you just subtract off the fixed costs from total costs, and that gives you the variable. So I'm going to use a formula here in Excel, uh, equals E2 minus F2. And then we're going to copy this down. And as you see, as you produce more units, total variable costs go up. You need more labor and you need more materials. Now these average things here, Average fixed, average variable, and average total cost. Average just means we need to divide that kind of cost by the quantity of units that we're making. So average fixed cost, we're going to take the 650, and we're going to divide it by how many units we're making. And so that's always going to be equals 650 divided by Q. Now, we actually can't do that for zero because dividing by zero is a no-no, and so usually we just say, you know, NA. You know, we're not going to worry about doing that. And same thing for marginal cost, and we start doing it with the first unit. So equals 650 divided by 1. We can do that and um, copy that down. So we're just dividing the 650 by the number of units. And what you see with average fixed cost is it always goes down. We're just dividing it by more units. You can think about what we're doing here is looking at your rent and normal profit. And the more units you produce, the more units you get to divide that over. So each unit is responsible for a lower and lower share of the fixed cost. Now, average variable cost, you do the same kind of thing, variable cost divided by quantity. That's not always going to go down, though. So equals uh, variable cost divided by quantity. And I'm going to copy that formula down. So, for example, that 361 is just uh, 3250 divided by 9. And it tells you per unit, on average, how much you're spending on the labor and materials for your units. So we're dividing, for seven units here, um, $92 of each of those units that I sell, the seven, 90, about $93 of each of those units I sell, has got to go towards paying my fixed costs. And $308 out of each of those seven units has to go, that I want to sell, has to go towards paying my labor and materials costs. Average total cost, same thing. Uh, it's just the total cost divided by quantity. So equals 1040 divided by 1 in this case. Now, you can also get average total cost by adding up the average fixed plus the average variable. All we're doing, just like with the total cost, splitting it into variable and fixed, we can think about this average total cost being split into average variable and average fixed. Now marginal cost is the additional cost of producing that unit and it's just how much is either the total cost going up or the variable cost going up. And so it's the difference as we produce more. So in this case equals $1,040 minus 650. That tells us that first unit increased our costs by 390, so the first unit cost $390. And the fifth unit cost $338. So 
So now that we're done calculating these things in the table and we have an idea what they mean, let me graph the three important ones for us. All right, now I've graphed the average total cost, the red, the average variable cost, the blue, and the marginal cost. And these always have some important parts to their shapes. The marginal cost normally looks like a Nike swoosh or a check mark. The average total and average variable costs usually look something like a U shape. The average total cost is going to be higher than the average variable cost. And the difference between them is the average fixed cost. That's why we usually don't graph average fixed cost. Number one, because it always goes down. And number two, you can see it anyway. For example, let's look at uh, three units here. The average total cost looks like on the graph it's about 450 or so. And the average variable cost looks like it is uh, two, maybe 250. And so if we had to guess um, what the average fixed cost is, it's going to be the difference between, well I've got a little bubble showing up here that says that the average total cost is 455 and the average variable is 238. So the difference between them is going to be the average fixed cost. 455 minus 238 and that's going to be somewhere around you know 220 or so. And if we go back to the table we can see that that is going to be at three units the average fixed cost is 216. So the average total cost and average variable cost are a U, average total cost is higher. Now another important part of this shape of these curves is that the marginal cost curve when it's below average variable cost, average variable cost is going to be heading down. But as soon as the marginal cost curve crosses it, it's going to start pulling it back up. So the minimum average variable cost is where the marginal cost goes through it. Same thing with average total cost, except it's at a different place. The minimum average total cost is where the marginal cost goes through it. It goes down to that point and then starts going back up. Why is this? Well, the best analogy would be thinking about the grades that you might make in a class, since you're, you're used to thinking about averages. The average, suppose this is your average grade in a class, and the green are grades you're making on quizzes as you go through the class. But you're, the only difference is, well, let's look at the average variable cost. That makes a little more sense. On your first test, you make a 400 your average variable and your average test score and your marginal are the same at, at about 400. Now on the second test you only make a 200 that pulls your average down. On your third test you make a, a 130 which pulls your average down even further because your score was your below your average. But then on the fourth test you score somewhere close to your average so that doesn't affect your average much but then for the rest of the course all your scores are higher than your average what's going to happen is it's going to pull your average up slowly as you score better and better as you study more and it's the same with these costs if an additional unit is less than the average it pulls the average down if an additional unit is bigger than the average it pulls the average up and and that's all you have to think about that now what do we use these for? Let me draw a line here for a particular price and explain how that goes. Okay, now we can see the table. Basically, here's what you do. If you have a market price of $500, these units where the marginal cost, that's the actual cost to produce those units, is higher than the price you can sell them for, you don't want to produce those units. Because if you produce them, for 650 and 585, we're looking over here at the table, 650, 585, and 507, if you produce the 8th, 9th, and 10th units, you're going to turn around and sell them for 500, which is less than what they cost you to make, so you don't want to make them.
pretty easy. And then we draw a line. We say if we don't want to make the 8th, 9th, and 10th units, we're going to make the 7th. Let's see what's happening at 7 units. So the decision would be to make 7 units and stop. You don't want to make the 8th, 9th, or 10th because the marginal cost is higher than the price. Sometimes we call it the marginal revenue. Now, are we going to make a profit? Yes, because the price, which is the average revenue, how much money are you bringing in per unit, is bigger than the average total cost, which is on average how much money is going out per unit, if you want to think about it that way. So if I'm bringing in 500 per unit and it's costing me 400 per unit on average, I'm making a profit of about $100 per unit, which is 100 dollars per unit times seven units, I'm going to be making $700 in profit approximately.